Hey there guys, this is Chef Chris, and today we are making Red Velvet Filled Cake Pops. I made these for Mother's Day, they were a big hit, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make them. Alright, so we're going to start off. We have a cup and a half of confectioner sugar, which is powdered sugar. I used a cup and a half, I don't like my icing too sweet. I'm making a homemade icing here. Um, if you like it a little more sweet, add two cups. Um, really depends. You can always add more, but you can't take out. So put a cup and a half, taste it, and then adjust. All right, now in a separate bowl, I had the 8-ounce package of uh, Philadelphia cream cheese. That's the best cream cheese, of course. Actually, I think Walmart might even be better. I think that brand actually tastes pretty good. I had a stick of butter. I used the salt, salted butter. You can use unsalted, no problem. We're going to go ahead and uh, use a stand mixer or hand mixer and uh, get that nice and smooth. Go ahead and wipe down the sides, as you can tell, just to make sure you incorporate everything. To that, we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And um, my secret ingredient in my frosting is sour cream. Um, I use daisy. Do a daisy. Doop, doop, a daisy. Uh, I added two heaping uh, tablespoons of sour cream. Nice big spoons in there. Go ahead and whip it up nicely once again. Make sure it is smooth. And to that, we are going to throw in that sugar. I should have probably uh, thrown in half and then the other half because it's sort of uh, splattered everywhere. But uh, now I know for next time. All right, whip that up again. Go ahead and uh, make sure that's all incorporated. And look at that. Beautiful. Go ahead and wipe down the sides one more time. Just get the rest of that little bit of powdered sugar in. Don't worry about mixing it again. But uh, you've got some delicious homemade cream cheese frosting there. All right, we're going to put that in the fridge. Let it uh, stiffen up just a little bit. While that was stiffening up, I went back. We have a bowl. Look at that red velvet cake. We're going to go ahead and crumble it. I will neither admit nor deny that I used a box cake here. Because I had, a, I had about 100 cake pops to make. So uh, I cheated just a little bit. But I do have a red velvet cake recipe that I'll show you guys feature if you guys want to know. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and crumble that cake as you saw me do. And incorporate that icing. I put in half first. Because, like I said before, you can you can always add more, but you can't take out. So if you put too much frosting, you're going to end up with this night, this big mess. You definitely don't want that. I ended up using about three-fourths of the icing. Maybe a little bit under. I uh, added some. I noticed it was a little dry. I added a little bit more. You want to incorporate it. You don't want to mush it. As you can tell, I am actually going to slice through the cake to go ahead and try to incorporate it. Just like that. All right, and uh, I was pretty happy with this consistency. All right, now the secret to getting your cake balls all the exact same size is using a scoop. I used a nice little melon baller. Actually, I think it's bigger than a melon baller. Um, I think it's an ice cream scoop. It's a mini one. But I found, uh, I used three scoops of these. It's not definitely an ice cream scoop, of course. It's a lot smaller. I don't know the exact size. I'm so sorry. But once I found a size of cake pop I was happy with, I use the same one. All right, I scooped it out three times, as you could tell. I'm going to give them a nice roll. Make sure if you saw what I did there, I um, pinched the little creases. Make sure they are smooth. Okay, we're going to toss it into the uh, freezer for about 30 minutes to an hour. Stiffen up, take them on out, re-roll them again. This is a long process, guys. They are not tough to make, but they take time. Believe me. It took me days, I mean days, to make 100. Oh, it was killer. I'm so... It was definitely not a cakewalk. Droots. <laughs> Alright. So, um, we re-rolled them again out of the freezer. I'm, st I'm actually stacking them up here because I noticed that when I put them in the pan, they actually flatten out. So I decided to stack them there. Put them back in the freezer. Alright. Now, while they, were f while they were cooling off again, we have our chocolate. I'm using Melts. You're going to go to the store, ask for melts. This is a specific kind that we use for cake pops and stuff to dip chocolates in. Or even, I'm sorry, stuff to dip strawberries in even. Alright, I used purple. I added a little bit of white there, as you can tell, just because I wanted a little bit of a softer color. We're also going to add a little bit of vegetable oil just to thin it out. Not too much. You can always add more. You cannot add takeout. So I was really happy with this consistency here. I'm using a melter, a Wilton melter that I got at Walmart. It was $20, and if you're making a lot of cake pops, it's definitely worth it. All right, I took the cake pops right back out of the freezer. We're going to roll again. This is our final roll, actually. Thank goodness. Uh, we're going to make sure these cake balls are as smooth as possible. Now, here's a little trick. So the cake pops and the sticks stay in, 
we're gonna dip them in the chocolate and dip them in the cake pop. And then we're gonna refreeze them. Now this will make sure the stick stays in there. It doesn't fall out, it doesn't move. It's a great idea. I only did half there because the other half was gonna be uh, pink. I did quite a few colors. All right, now we're gonna take them out one more time. Make sure they are as round as possible. Smooth them out with your fingers. They should be nice and hard because they were in the freezer. Your hands will always warm them up, so you want them to be hard. We're going to dip them in. Now, here's the trick. You don't just dip them and you don't just take them out and put them in the freezer because you are going to have a huge mess all over your stick. You're going to have uneven spots. The trick is to give it a little twirl. Now, this takes actually like a minute or two to actually get all this chocolate, the excess chocolate off. But um, it's well worth it for the look, for the presentation. All right, now here's another little trick I actually use. I, I actually give it a little tap. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. if you guys know where that's from. A little Happy Gilmore reference. My last little tip, after you dip them, throw them in the freezer. That's going to prevent any kind of cracking. I had a huge problem with cracking the first time I started making these until I figured out this little tip or trick. And uh, as we all know, crack kills. <laughs> it was killing me. All right, well, um, after that, I rotated. I put one in the freezer, and I stick them in the fridge, let them set. I like to keep mine in the fridge. Um, just because uh, sometimes they start melting outside. All right, I'm gonna start decorating. Uh, watch this little video. It took a while for me to to master this. I haven't even mastered it quite yet, but uh, enjoy, and I'll be right back.
All right, guys, well, those were my cake pops. And if you have any recipes you guys would like to learn how to make, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to do that. And as always, guys, you guys enjoy. Mmm, yummy.